Although computers lately, and I told Chris Dim this, I did the wrong thing. Uh, and <laughs> all right. And nobody believes me. Nobody takes me seriously either. When I, if I was looking at my computer screen down in the bottom left hand corner, mm. there's a search bar where you can just search whatever on your computer, you know? Well, right now there's a picture of a watermelon down there, or there was yesterday because it was National Watermelon Day. And, uh, I don't hover over that. I never click on the icon that's down there. But a few days ago, there was a snake curled up. And for I don't know why I did it, but I hovered my cursor over that snake and the whole computer shut down. And everything and it, and it wouldn't restart. It was like a virus got it. You got bit. You got bit. So I called in our engineer and I said to Chris Dem and our engineer, I said, there's a snake on the computer and I hovered over it. And Peter, sir, what kind of snake was it? <laughs> it, was, it was like a, it was a, it was a, a, a like a poison. Was it a trouser snake? It was a poisonous <laughs> snake. Well, that's another thing. Listen to how Chris Dim wound me up. The engineer came in. I said, I hovered over a snake. And Chris Dim said, that's metaphorical. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we. <laughs> I do it every day. You hear that? It sounds like a cover for. Of course it does. That's not the case. I yeah. literally hovered over, over a snake. snake. Over a snake. Well, now there's a watermelon down there. I'm not even touching it. I won't even. <laughs> yeah, no I'm not even touching it. Uh, it's a snake. It shuts down my computer. It's just to hover over whatever icon is there. At least the snake did. I can tell you that. It happens mm -hmm. every day, something different? Yeah. There's never any naked boobies down there, is there? I, 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 call me in your office if there is. I don't think so. I don't even look at that corner of my screen most mm -hmm. days. I don't think I have that. Uh, it, well, you might. I have it. you got a special program. I do. Excuse me, there's a, there's big titties down the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say, I don't want to cause a scene or make a big deal, but <laughs> there's, titties. there's titties right here. There's titties. I hovered, and now I can't get my computer back. <laughs> and the computer was just dead. It was dead. Um, and it's like, no one... I mo Hey, Siri, can I motorboat my computer? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of computers do they use in Israel? It's terrible. It's terrible. I couldn't. I and no, I have not. But a lot of times it's uh, seasonal. You know, there'll be a jack lantern down there in October, okay, or okay. a witch on her broom, or something. Don't trust it. I can't. You can't. I hovered over one thing, a snake, and that was it. And it was like coiled up, you know, and <laughs> and hissing. This. Hissing. And it didn't. It. Uh, what was it today? I didn't notice today. Uh, but it's always yesterday was watermelon because it was like National Watermelon Day. It's a trumpet. It must be uh, like a jazz singer, jazz day, jazz or player. something like that. So there's a trumpet down there today. Well, it's don't... Louis Armstrong's birthday. Oh, well, there it is. Whatever. It... And then if you hover over it, it's supposed to give you information. But for me, it shut everything down. <laughs> Nobody believed me. It was just the timing. How can that? It was because I literally I was like, let's see what this snake does. <laughs> oh, I see. Do you think people over at Microsoft were like someone actually clicked the snake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might be. That may have been. Who hovers over it. a snake? Who hovers over a snake like that? I did. A moment ago, I was explaining. Today, we're taking my son to East Carolina University to just to drop off his things, not him. This is phase one. Phase one of drop off. Which yeah. I think they're pretty smart on how they do it. I think because they give you a slot, you go. There won't be that many people there. It won't be like fighting with people shoulder to shoulder on the stairway to get into the dorm. It's probably all freshmen. Yes, and they probably span it over two days. Today and tomorrow. Uh, many days. We, uh, his roommate went last week. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I was ask that, you, yeah, that was my next question. So you won't get to meet the roommates mm -mm, he family was, today. He was there a few days ago and uh, dropped off. But his, his side of the room's done. And his mother texted my wife and said, here's how it looks and all Are that they, stuff. Are uh, the boys communicating? No. <laughs> no, they're not. They met one time. You saw the bro picture. I did? That's uh, how it'll be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're not. They're done. I mean, they're Yeah. yeah. They'll see each other day of when they move in. And that's just, I guarantee the next conversation they have will be, sup, sup. Like, was they meet in the room. In the room. Mm -hmm. And they're going to wind up sharing that room yeah. for a year. So I mentioned that we're going to Sup Dogs, which is a hot dog place. And there's nothing on my program that I can eat there. So I told my wife I was going to take a spinach salad mm. and eat it from the outside. And she goes, you are not. Do you have any Tupperware? You are not embarrassing me like <laughs> that. Sad. She's right. So I'm getting a vegan burger, but just the burger with no bun. And I'll get a piece of tomato and a piece of lettuce. No on sides? It. He's no. going to eat the paper. No, the basket. Uh, no tater tots and no fries and no onion rings and certainly no bacon tots. So you can have those Bacon tots? Oh, God. Covered with bacon and cheese. That's like their thing. <sighs> oh, their oh. menu is tremendous. I really want to go. <laughs> I mean, it looks great. It looks great. I really like, want to try one of the orange crushes. Everything yeah, about it. it. Mm -hmm. When I read it, I was salivating, but knowing that I would have none of it. Because why? Too strong of mind, body, and spirit on a program. Won't do I it. I can't wait till they bring the veggie burger, no bun out, mm -hmm. and uh, start looking around for where it goes on the table. Mm -hmm. Like, is your other daughter in the bathroom? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> yeah, that's mine. Believe me. 
everybody else is going to have hot dogs and tater tots covered mm-hmm. with cheese and bacon. I won't. Yeah. Let them live. Who hit the three dogs all the way? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, the small girl. <laughs> yeah. You know they'll accidentally oh, put yeah, of course. The, 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 the burger, the veggie, yeah. veggie burger. Set them all down in front of you. Of course. They'll sit the hot dogs in front of me, naturally. <laughs> well, anyway, it leads to this. And Dave, you're going to absolutely hate this. Oh, you're you, going to hate You're going to hate it. this more than anything. <laughs> it's all week. Uh, yeah. According to a company called Fast Company, there's a place called Charlie's Steakhouse in Florida. And they are the first ever steakhouse in the United States to have a vegan filet mignon on their menu. It is 100% vegan. And they have all other steaks, and people seem to love their steaks. And they're going to charge you $69 for that vegan filet what? mignon. Mm-hmm. $69? What do you think uh, like a ribeye goes for there? Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. Probably. What's it called? Charlie's? It's called Charlie's Steakhouse in Florida. And there are multiple locations, and they have. Uh, it was made possible by a group called Chunk Foods. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna slap myself for asking, but what what makes it that price? Okay, Chunk Foods makes the steak, and they make it out of the finest quality fermented soy, <sighs> coconut oil, beet juice, fortified iron, and B1. And that's what it's made of. Uh, it all conglomerated mm. together to make a vegan filet mignon. So it is. Uh, so they are saying we are welcome. We are open now to vegans, even though we are a steakhouse. And they want to make it as close to the texture, color, and taste of traditional steak as they possibly can. They finally said at Charlie's, this is the one. And it comes from chunks. It's a big deal. I wonder how much demand they've had or if they're just trying to get, Mm -hmm. you know, a little free pub. Mm. Yeah, free pub. Um, Maybe. Because, you know, they've they've been, you can do ground beef way more easily. This is a whole different texture. Uh, Yeah. It's hard to get the texture right on steak. I mean, will you cut it with a steak knife? They say they will. They say that they, they have gotten as close as they possibly can to a steak texture and taste. Could you Oscar it? I bet you could, don't you think? Uh, or hollandaise on yeah, top? Yeah, I bet you could if 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 vegans are allowed to eat right. those things. Oh, yeah. They might. What's the one we like? Au poivre. <sighs> oh, that's right. That's your previous life. Man, au poivre was That takes me back a day. What's that? Got gravy on it? That's a gravy-ish. But uh, pepper-flavored? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. That's really good. I like I like used to like cheese on there too. Now no vegan would get that. You get the blue cheese crumbles and oh, whatnot. Do oh, blue cheese crumbles. They they won't do that. Of course vegans will not do so that. So this is for people that love steak but just won't eat it. They love the flavor of te- steak, but they for no red meat. political reasons or whatever they don't or want. Or for health reasons, I guess that's right. An they, eight ounce fillet is fifty five at so, Charlie's. So this is more expensive. Yeah. This is a six ounce vegan fillet for sixty nine. Yeah. That's a more expensive. And uh it says it's difficult because the whole cuts are difficult to make the texture just right. But Chunk Foods say they finally perfected it, and they are selling it first to Charlie's Restaurant. They call it the FU. Have you seen that? I did. Yeah, they, the it, FU freaking unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Now that's how good <laughs> it is. It's freaking unbelievable that <laughs> you're going to get this. We'll man. see. We'll see if it sells well. I know that those things are supposed to be cheaper. I mean, was it you were supposed to be a little more economical? I, I understand it's a high-end steakhouse, but mm. well, you'd still, think, you'd think it wouldn't be more expensive than the regular. Yeah, you're not aging beef, right? Yeah. Would you say it was fermented soybean? Let me get it right again. Yes, fermented soy and wheat, coconut oil, beet juice, fortified iron, and B1. I don't even know what you just said. Mm. Do you think there's there will come a time where people can do this, make this in their homes, or is it just the, an economy of scale? You know, you need to do it in volume. I think there'll come a time where you can do it in I mean, your You home. could get the ingredients, but I don't know that you have the, the wherewithal to but, make a steak. Well, I think eventually there will be a vegan steak on the grocery store right. next, next to the regular steaks, you know, especially at a high end, like a Whole Foods or something yeah. like that. I think that eventually, because they've gotten pretty good at the burger part of it, they've just got to get good at the steak part mm-hmm. of it. But Dave has already said that Taco Bell, and they went to a vegan crunch wrap, that it won't last. Let's see if this steak lasts. That's right. You keep our eye on that. Mm-hmm. There is a uh, woman now, a couple of women in the news who are over, uh, one's over 100 years old, and she's giving her secrets to live to be 102. She'll celebrate you gotta that. you got to ask them. Of course, that's what you ask. Uh, how did you live to be 102? They either go one of two ways. They either say, well, they watch their diet, exercise, so forth, or they'll take a little drink. Can I drink a little? Every other night I do vodka, but the other nights I do brandy, bourbon, Irish whiskey, uh, honey whiskey. That's your girl, Dave. Yeah, I like her. That's Eleanor Campbell. She uh, lives in Columbus, Ohio, and the news went there 
to ask her about her secret to living to be 102, which she'll turn next month. And she still is really on her game. I would never know. Mm-hmm. She's in, she lives in a house. She sounds mm-hmm. pretty yeah. you know, mentally together. Absolutely with it. She was telling them about her uh, prom date. It was a fix-up 84 years ago and was a terrible date. She wound up never seeing the guy again, but she married her husband. She met her husband at that prom mm. and eventually got married to him. He died in his 80s. They had three kids and nine grandchildren. And the one person that she is smitten by is old Tom Selleck from Blue Bloods. Uh, Tom Selleck and I have lunch every Saturday because he's on on Friday night. She can't stay up late enough to watch it on Friday night. But she, she re- DVRs or somebody she records she it DV- for her. She DVRs it. She's on demand. And they said <laughs> that she's very, very good at computers and emailing and that kind of thing. And she keeps up with everybody's birthday in her head. And she sends out 150 birthday cards to all her friends and relatives all during wow. the year. Wow. All during the year. Keeps her busy. Dang. Yeah, she does. And she remembers all that stuff. And you know, to, to, to know that you have vodka every other night. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, every other night. Brown that's liquor, a, white liquor, brown liquor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's quite a, a pattern. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I knew you would, Dave. I'll have to consider that one day. Look at that. He's After right. I come off to the dailies. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll uh, back it up a little bit. That's right. When every you, other day. When you get to trouble. What days do you start on, though? Do you pick Saturday or Sunday? I start and then, and then work from there. I feel like the first day of the week is Monday, so I would go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Sunday, yeah. See, I'd want to do Saturday. Yeah, you definitely. Yeah, you're right. But then the next week, because you know the days are off, it's. Uh, but then yeah. you're having brandies. Yeah. You can do it when you reach your triple digits. You can do it. Yeah. She said the uh, what strengthened her was the depression. Uh, it made her tough when she was young. Uh, she was born in 1921. So when she was a girl, a vivid memories of the depression. She has the memories of the depression, and she said, "If the depression hadn't come along, I might have been like a spoiled princess, but we lost everything, and it toughened her." And wow! She, she grew up, and now she's a hundred and two. It'll years be old. interesting to see what kids who were, you know, in the zero eight crash and then the lived through COVID, what they're like in fifty years. That's a tough twenty. All their years. experiences. That's... How will it change them? How affect them? Yeah, if you were eight years old, if you were born in 2000. During the lockdowns. I mean, already you've yeah. been through a terrible financial crash mm-hmm. in 2008 and a lockdown in 2020. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a one-two punch yeah. in only 12 years. It's pretty Your tough. kids have lived it. Yeah, they have. My kids. Or your son. My son was born in 05. My daughter was born in 08. Yeah. In fact, she was born right before yeah. uh, the big crash. The, uh, the other woman that's in her 80s uh, who's making the news today is Marjorie Perkins. 87 years old. She lives in Brunswick, Maine. She was at home asleep, and somebody came into her house to rob her. So at 87, she quickly slipped on her shoes and grabbed a chair to fight off. Ooh, like a wrestler? The robber, yeah. (laughs) She took a chair upside his head. I jumped out of bed, got my shoes on real fast because they don't have ties, and I was ready to kick. I grabbed my chair, and uh, he grabbed me by the shoulders and pushed me against the wall and so forth. So I took my chair and I kept hitting him. So she kept hitting him. Man. And then he calmed That's down. nice uh, plug for Skechers, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she says she did that. Yeah, just slip right in. Yeah. You don't have to, yeah, tie that's, you don't have to tie that, See, that's the, new, uh, that's the new hot thing with shoes. Yeah. Is the no, no tie. tie. No you tie. Just, yeah. The back kind of bends in mm-hmm. and you slide in and boom. You right. wear your Hey Dudes, right, Kelly? They're uh, no tie? I like those. You got Hey Dude? I didn't buy them. Uh, I like did you buy them. knockoffs? No, I didn't buy any. Remember, uh-huh. I was at that place. That I do. Day. We were standing next to one another. They had hey dudes, at, but they're a little bit too pricey for me. Uh-huh. So I'm just not going to do it. You didn't buy the hey days? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, y'all. I decided against. Hey, y'all. Because you went in. And I, I did. Was, you, know, we, you said, I'm going to go in there and get some hey dudes. And I said, all right, I'll see you Monday. Right. I and I left. But I did you it. just wait for me to leave? Yeah. I watched you drive away and hid. <laughs> Our shoes are non-gender. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I have seen females in them. <laughs> I have too. These hey days. <laughs> These hey days. Hey they. <laughs> I didn't like the the pronouns of the hey dude. Yeah. So My I you don't need the pronouns. Do I have anything that's non-gender specific? We have the hey days. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. here they're neutral colors. <laughs> <laughs> Almost bought some knockoff Skechers yesterday at Costco. They make knockoff Scorchers, <laughs> <laughs> and they were they the look feet burn. Just step in them and they, go. Yeah, step and go, yeah. and they look nice. Yeah. You know, my son, his shoes do tie, but he treats them like slip-ons, and they're always like the the back of yeah, Lots of kids do that. And, I know they and do. it tears yeah. the hell out of them. Exactly, faster. And I say, I'm having to buy you more shoes than I should. You don't untie them. Ooh, <laughs> you know, you get you get that response. Anyway, lazy teens these days. Well, the lady <laughs> who was being robbed by this kid in his 20s, and she's 87. So she's sitting in with a chair. He's banging, he's, her, he's against banging her against the wall. Well, eventually he calmed down and said he was hungry, 
And that's how she wound up getting police to her place to save the day. He said he was very hungry, so I gave him crackers and peanut butter, be ready to kick and then tip, pick up a chair and hit somebody with it. <laughs> During the cracker peanut butter snack break, she called police surreptitiously behind his back, called 911. That's remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, a coolness under pressure. Yes, at yeah. age 87. And she said, here, that was her advice at the end. Be ready to kick, get you some slip-on shoes, and have your peanut butter at the ready. She did not give Skippy or Peter Pan. <laughs> no shout-out, just the Skechers. Kind of, just mm -hmm. the Skechers got the plug there. That's pretty impressive, I would say. The other crime piece today, and this is impressive too, actually, and I'm, I'm surprised more people don't do it. Uh, someone has been caught in the Washington, D.C. area a woman dressed as an Amazon delivery driver, just in a blue outfit that looks like an Amazon delivery driver, is caught on a doorbell camera walking up to a house in a very nice neighborhood carrying two boxes, two packages, leaving that box at the door but picking up a box that has really been delivered. This is a fake. So there's nothing in the packages there's that no, she drops? They're just beat up boxes. And so she drops them, and it, it looks all normal, and she just picks one up and goes away very nonchalantly. And nobody notices. To me, this is Real smart. next level thinking yeah. on porch pirates. Yeah. Because normally it's just run up, grab what I can, yeah. and go. But this is like a next level. Yeah. No one would question that. She mm -hmm. leaves empty boxes. And it's like, oh, I'm picking up one that they're sending back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she just puts and if on you're a neighbor, you don't think anything of no. it. No. And she wears a blue shirt in a uniform that looks similar to an Amazon delivery driver. That's pretty smart. So you put a little thought into it. Yeah, the doorbell camera's fooled. Yeah, everything. yeah. And the guy, this is the victim, and he looked at the doorbell camera. He's like, What's going on? You know, he had to watch it two or three times to figure it out. But I was a little bit confused in the beginning because she was wearing blue. And I thought she was an Amazon delivery person, and it turned out not to be. I'm just worried about, like, um, safety in a neighborhood. And um, we always feel in this area we're more insulated in some ways, but I guess it can hit you anywhere. It was an affluent neighborhood. Sounds like Georgetown. It is in Georgetown, and when they showed the fronts of the houses, I thought, that's an affluent neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, the porch pirates have to think a little more and do a little more work to pick up packages there. There you heard him, mm -hmm. and that's so that is happening now. Uh. You know, it's interesting if you watch the the commercials for Ring Doorbell and other similar products. I'm not trying to single anybody out, but mm -hmm. sometimes you will see they try to sell themselves as you know being security mm -hmm. focused. And Kelly, you've got some, right? We beefed up security a year Had ago. Two. Had two, one to. year ago, the mm -hmm. wheels were in motion. That's right. Um, but what you see in the commercials is, you know, someone will walk up. It's usually broad daylight. Someone mm -hmm. walks up to the commer in the commercial shot, mm -hmm. walks up to your porch, starts grabbing something. And then a voice from inside their house or yes. the ring doorbell goes, hey, what are you doing? Yep. And the porch pirates run away. Yeah. Do you think that really stops them? <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I, I don't mean, know. Maybe 50%? I don't know. I mean, I think it would give you a little bit of a jolt, you might think. Because you can do that from anywhere, right? You don't have to even be home. You could be at work mm -hmm. and see staring it. at your phone. And you, Well, if you said, like, I just called police. Police are one minute away. I mean, that's what you should say. Yeah. I mean, I would try it. Can you pull up your camera on your phone right now, Kelly? Yeah. No. I should no. be able to. My wife does not give me that access. What? Why not? I don't know. She's the only one with access. In fact, we caught a ne'er-do-well. Uh, on the yeah. porch just yesterday, walking up on the porch. Huh. This was I stranger. Said, stranger danger. And I mm. said, "What's he doing there?" And she goes, "What's he holding?" Looks like some sort of a clipboard to get us to try to buy something. Well, but you we, had a sign out front. No, too. Oh, we do. No soliciting. Yeah. And he broke through the that, perimeter and got up on the <laughs> that porch. Didn't, that didn't stop him. Did mm -hmm. uh, as the alarms blared? Did everyone? go to a separate corner and hide. Or... That's right. Did you mm -hmm. scramble and, and yes. effectively? Yes, we all scrambled, and we wound up up under uh, dining room tables and so forth. We he, are not. He, he rung the bell. He rung the bell. Then he did. And he he's got that, uh, that neon yellowy mm -hmm. shirt that sort of looks official. Yeah, that's right. Vehicle? Uh, truck back in the background. We're not going to give the time of day to anybody anymore. You know what happened to me. One year ago today, I was in the closet with a helmet on. He's back. All right. He's just there to celebrate with you. Not doing that.